Pledge of Allegiance. Here. Action. Good to know. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We'd like to call the meeting to order at 631, says my computer, so I'm going to ignore that one up there. This looks good. <laughs> All right, let's see. I gotta get agenda, thank you. Approval of agenda. So moved. Second. All right, we have some additions just so you guys know. Um, underneath building and grounds is where the bond warning goes. It's not a separate issue. It should be warned under the building and grounds committee. So we're moving that up there. Uh, we have two other businesses, a 403B resolution and a school choice. We need to cap, talk about our numbers. And we do have um, executive session needs. And we're not gonna do the number 10 PBL presentation. We're just slightly again? Casey again. <laughs> so, you know, you know. I even didn't bring the box. I, I just I scaled it down this time because I was on the road. I think we'll put it possibly at the wow. board retreat in March, which we have to talk about. But I think it might need to be a time. retreat. March of 21. <laughs> March of 21. So any other, uh, any other corrections or additions? Retreats. Okay, all in favor, please say aye. 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 That's not a treat. All opposed? <laughs> Thank you very much. We're on to approval of minutes from our last meeting, January 6th. So moved. Second. Second. Okay, we do have one discussion under number four, under other business, which is like the fifth page. Um, it says Glenn made a motion to actually continue to fully fund the Orwell Ski Program. Actually, he only made a motion to continue talking about it at the resumed finance committee meeting. So we're just going to put that in there, and then the actual uh, outcome is in the finance committee meeting. <coughs> that is funded. So that's the only change I have. Anybody else have any other changes? Okay, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Great, thank you. All right, presentation from the Village School students. Welcome. Hi. I'll start. I'm going to introduce Mrs. Rampone and then she can introduce these guys. Um, I'm Phil Hall, for anyone who doesn't know, I'm the assistant principal here at CES. And tonight we're going to present to you some cool things we've been doing with Edison Robots. We're very fortunate here to have Mrs. Tina Rampone twice a week. who comes in and teaches me <coughs> what you see here, which is everything from online safety to very cool things like robots. So uh, we're going to show you some Edison Robots. So, uh, Mrs. Cacciatore and I have gone to Dynamic Landscapes and Vital Learn, and you can sign up for different workshops. And one of the ones we went to twice was the Edison Robots, and we were just wowed with what they're capable of doing, and we thought we've got to get these for our school district. Um, so, we, we asked our tech people, is this something we can get? And they graciously bought three sets for us. Um, with the attachments and all the goodies that go with them. So we're, we're very fortunate. Um, Chris Masden, Griffin Burt, and Asher Overkirk um, agreed to come and demonstrate to you uh, what they're capable of doing. Um, not only can they be programmed with barcodes, but they can also be programmed with computers, and they're going to demonstrate that for you. Um, so I will let them take up take on that. Probably the table. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it follows your hands with the clapping, which is pretty cool. 
<laughs> Super cool. <laughs> so yeah, that's pretty cool to watch. <laughs> I keep wanting <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for your patience. We're um, at public comment. Liz, nothing? <laughs> She's here to sign the warnings. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Correspondence? Nothing. All right, Building and Grounds Committee. Okay, so <clears throat> we had a uh, Buildings and Grounds Committee meeting last Monday or Tuesday. And we basically went over the um, budget for the innovation project, which everybody has a copy of. And the uh, um, Buildings and Grounds Committee um, thinks we should approve the whole amount of. Um, Fifty-nine million. Well, fifty-nine million five hundred thousand to go for the the bond to be warned. Um, and if you have any questions about that, I guess Chris or we're going to do a little. We we okay. put a pre little presentation okay. together. I, well, I think we should do it because I think it's important yeah. enough that we need to all be on the same page and know what was talked about. Okay. So I don't know. Can we? See that? Turn out the lights. Turn off the lights. 
There we need the look. I know what they one. It's tough, but it's. Huh? It's in that. Yeah, it's right there. That's good. Yeah. Okay. So. Just for you guys. Oh my gosh, you guys. You didn't need that name. <laughs> so, to go along with the presentation, there's some slides in here that are. They're small, so they're hard to see. In that, the bigger um, printout that you have, those are the large documents that have the plans that are up here, so you guys can see everything. And also, John is here, our architect. If you have questions, um, John is also going to be able to help answer those questions. Chris, do you have an extra copy? Mm -hmm. That was enough for me. Well, I can, I'll share it with Julie. Never mind. <clears throat> Good. There's plenty here. Thanks. All right. So the background on the project, um, so the Slate Valley Unified Union School Board established a committee um, back in the fall of 2018, um, and it consisted of board members, staff, community members to really develop a plan that would look at the educational opportunities throughout the district. And additionally how to address the financial burden of growing deferred maintenance and declining enrollment so over the course of a year that committee met um, surveyed um, the community gathered data and put the innovation plan forward to the board um, and you moved voted to move forward with the full scope of that project in October of 2019. The rationale for the project on um, the current facilities in varying degrees had um, serious problems that needed immediate attention related to aging infrastructure. For example, um, HVAC at the high school, um, we had um, plumbing, electrical, um, heating um, at um, Orwell, Town Hall um, at Orwell. And the committee also felt, um, based on the information that that committee gathered, that our schools no longer fully supported um, the existing or future educational programs as outlined in our vision and mission which if you remember back in 2017, 2018, we did community surveys. We met with staff um, parent and parent groups, school board to really define what our vision and mission was for the district. And the district vision can really be distilled down. Well, no, it's because somebody else is switching oh, it for gotcha. me. <laughs> So um, that all students are engaged in rigorous, authentic, experiential, individualized learning and it's supported or accelerated to ensure that they meet or exceed standards. And so looking at designing learning spaces that would help um, ensure these outcomes for, for students. Um, I, I said this earlier on, our infrastructure, like many districts throughout this state, um, have fallen into disrepair in some cases that really need to be addressed. And they, in, in their, the scope is so large that they really can't be addressed within our current budget structure. So that's why um, we are asking for a bond. Do you want me to go through the whole thing or do you wanna? No, I'm gonna, once we get to the plans though. Okay. So some of the things, Right oh, us. some of the things we're talking about <laughs> um, in terms of the bond um, in the infrastructure up, um, upgrades would include um, energy efficiency throughout the, our buildings with LED lighting, biomass, um, heating source, um, new windows, plumbing and electrical. The high school, um, specifically at the high school, and if you can well, if you can see <laughs> that picture, that is the one of the drafts that we have of what the building might look like. Um, so lots of natural light 
Um, really want to address code and safety issues around ADA compliance, specifically in our um, doorways, stairways, bathrooms. Um, address the heating, the plumbing, the electrical, kitchen and bathrooms um, throughout the throughout the building. So if you look at the, towards the back of the handout, you'll see some of the different um, renderings that John has put together, just John and his team has put together, of what it could look like in the front of the high school. Um, Brooke talked about new windows. In that image, you see new windows within the front. Um, there's a side view of some of the different spaces. So that's some concepts of what it, it could look like. So anyone have any questions about the high school? All right. Middle school, um, the committee um, and the board agreed to put forward a bond that also takes into account the construction of an integrated but autonomous middle school facility on the high school campus. Um, that, there's a rendering here in the presentation, but also it's on page. Right now it is designed as a single story, but um, that can change um, depending on what we do if the bond passes. I mean, what, what you're doing when you're taking a bond amount um, of 59 and a half million is you don't have to use the full amount. You can use less than that amount. But that it, it's a to, to not exceed um, target, so. So when we take those, the middle school, the high school plans, we put them together um, on the second page be the overall site plan of what the space would be um, at the high school for that middle school and high school. And if you take that um, in the single sheet for the budget for that high school, middle school combined, that part of the project you're looking at about $52 million, 52 233 for the middle school, high school. So it's a complete renovation of the high school and the addition of the middle school. And the field work. And all the field work. That's okay. associated with that. And you can see there's a lot of numbers that make up, like the construction estimate on the high school, middle school is only 42 million. And then there's a lot of other expenses that go into getting to the final um, number for that budget. This um, project would be done in several phases. Yeah, and that, is that next? Next slide. Yep. So um, April 15th, 2021 through August 15th, 2022, that would be the construction of the new middle school. That actually needs to be constructed prior to the renovations of the high school because you need a place to move high school classes while the renovation um, of the high school is taking place. Otherwise, you would be in a situation where you're renting trailers to come in to temporarily house class classrooms. Um, and then June of 2022 to February of 2023 is when you do the high school locker rooms, athletic facilities, renovations, summer of 2022. Um, High School Gym, Southeast High School Wing, February of 23 through August of 23, you do the high school kitchen, the cafeteria, and alternative education space. Um, and then summer of 2023, you would do the Southwest High School Wing. So it would be the fall of 2023 where the middle school would actually be ready to accept our seventh and eighth graders. So we're talking about quite a few years um, between then and now, so. All right. Questions on that part before we go to Orwell? So in Orwell, there's similar issues that we're trying to address with the bond. Um, code safety issues, uh, infrastructure needs, uh, 
all two were the town hall in Orwell, so we know what the condition of that is. So this project will address that situation. And then also using the biomass, so we've incorporated the biomass in the Orwell project also. So you'll see that included in there. Um, on page, I think this is towards the beginning of the handout. Mm -hmm. So on the back of the first page, you'll see um, the proposal for the Orville Village School that adds uh, cafeteria, gym space, along with kitchen. Um, there is some modification to existing infrastructure. Some of the classrooms are going from classroom space to maybe some more um, personalized one-on-one -on -one space or small group space, and then some of the um, bathroom spaces are being renovated in Orwell, along with some of the preschool space that's in the um, lower level of the, the school up there. There's some renovations that are needed in there. And then you can see on the bottom right hand side of that map, you can see the little silo for the uh, biomass. And there's a little, little addition on there for the actually boiler room. So that would be built on the back side of um, the Orville School. So for that portion of it, you're looking at about 6.068 million for just adding that. Now there's another um, part to the Oral project that I don't believe has been totally decided yet. I think that's gonna take, do you wanna? Yeah, so legally, um, I think we're not um, certain of the direction we can move with the town hall. And so um, we have our attorneys looking at that. But the way we structured this bond is we've considered, like, worst case scenario, like, financially, anything else would cost us less. So really what I'm saying is I'm not sure certain we can remove the town hall or if you know it reverts back to the town those those are still it's a very complex issue that we're still um, gathering information on so what we've included in this budget is money for the removal of the town hall but realizing that we may not be able to do that or you know, ultimately, when we get into the project, um, you as a board may not want to move in that direction. So um, I think that question is still, it's still out there. So, but I think this gives us room to continue to make that decision, so. So in the handout, you see two different <coughs> versions. You see the one for the budget of 6,068,000, and then you see kind of an add-on for that. It, that actually adds, it removes the town hall and adds an additional 39 parking spaces in that area. Um, so it's not, if you see the figure for 355, 829, that's not just demolition or removal of the town hall, that's actually site work after it's gone, if, if that's decided. Um, so that'd be new parking, lights. Removal of the oil removal of the old oil tank that's still up there. So for 355, that's what that would encompass. Um, but, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, Peter, but I think the original direction that the town hall subgroup when Orwell was a single district, <coughs> um, their recommendation was to add on to the building. So that's why the innovation yeah. <coughs> adopted that Yeah, when we started, um, philosophy. Before we merged, when we started this the committee that was in Orwell, which included some town people, had decided to put the um, addition onto the school. Correct. Because at a town meeting, they voted to spend the money on replacing the town hall, not remodeling it. So that's, there is a handful of people that are starting to figure out that the town hall might come down. So, you know, we'll have to address them, but I don't think it's, I think in the end it will, right. well, it will play out the way it has but, to play but the, I just wanted to make sure everyone knew what the genesis of that decision was. Yeah, that's the way Orwell, at the time, before we were merged, we were working at. When we were looking at plans, we were adding on and taking the town hall down. So it, it was no secret to Orwell, even though some people think it is. So it's your assessment uh, that it's more likely than not that Orwell will eventually go along and tear that thing down? 
I think so. I won't put my life on it. <laughs> there is a, quite a few people that, for sentimental reasons, they want to keep it. So, it, you know, a lot of it, you know, I think as time goes by, maybe, you know, if the bond goes through and then they see what's happening, they, it might be, I think it will be easier for a lot of people. If we can't take it down, who owns it? School district owns it. School district <clears throat> owns it. We don't have to do anything to it if they're not going to use it for a school. Or at that point in time, we can decide to give it back, back to, the town. to the town or the original heirs, which remains to be determined. See, determined. King George. <laughs> because the family that donated to us in 1843, I'm not sure we exactly know who the ancestors are and if we can't determine who they are right now. There's so. some pretty strange deed restrictions and de deed language on the property that really need to get worked out. Surprise. Yeah. So we're trying to figure it out. So when you take all those, oh, sorry, there's one more project. I forgot about it. So at the Fairhaven grade school, um, that's the cover sheet and it's probably a little confusing what you're looking at there is the four the four different floor levels at Fairhaven grade school um, we talked about this at the building and grounds committee a little bit so in Fairhaven grade school all four floor, floors do not connect so there's nowhere in the building where you can actually get from floor four all the way down to the bottom floor um, because it was built on the side of the hill so this project will require us to put in two different elevator shafts. Um, and what you're seeing on that front page is just where in each floor um, the two new elevator shafts will go in to the building. The one that's on the board there kind of shows you where they look from the side view. So on the left side, that's the front of the building going down to the gym. And the way John designed it was 90% probably of your traffic would only be going from the gym floor up to that third floor. So if really the only kids that would have to come from one elevator get onto the second elevator to get down to the gym floor was anybody coming from the fourth floor of the um, school. So if you're coming from the fourth floor, you got to get off and then get on another level and then come back down. But the majority of our traffic is going to be on those bottom three floors. And this, so this would be an upgrade uh, to a. Yes, the so be stretcher compliant elevator issues. <clears throat> that they'd, you have to be able to get a stretcher into there and then transport someone in the elevator as opposed to tipping it and going down the steps. And our current elevators are approximately four feet by five feet. It's, it's really small. Um, so this is a big. It's. Yeah, probably a little small. It's really small. So that would be the upgrade for the Fairhaven Grade School, and that budget came in at um, 842 to do that project. So if you combine all those together, um, John's estimating throughout his work that he's done that we should be at a budget around 59, 500,000. Yeah. If we don't have students on the fourth floor of the grade school, do we still have to do the elevator project? Yeah, I mean, it's not just students. That it's be, staff. Yeah, or it's, it's staff, and in fact, it's a staff member that would even be more likely to need that every, every single day. <clears throat> and then this is Cheryl's part. <coughs> so I emailed you all the bond warning and the resolution earlier today. Um, so I know some of you were at work and probably didn't have a chance to read it over. I know some of you did reply um, to me. Um, so I just wanted to make sure that you had it there in writing. Um, so this, this is the um, actual warning language. So we're going to look at this again in a little bit. Cheryl's got a couple slides on the financial impact and we'll come back to it. Can I ask a quick question before we move away from this? Yep. I'm just curious if you can, you can explain what goes into the AE design number. Those are, that's the architectural engineering. So that's a, uh, a number that is budgeted here as a percentage of the cost 
Those are fees for you and your Those firm. are fees for me, yes, yes. Those is, it, is it a percentage of the overall project, or do you, you bill by the hour you put no, in? No, no, it, it's, we can do it a lot of different ways, but the standard way is to do it as a percentage of the construction cost. So, um, and, then, and it's a construction cost, so it's the number at the, the, at the top line of this. And then that's not getting a percentage of the permit fees that you're paying. So um, Brooke sent you the language for the bond article. So you see it here that um, that when you go back, if you go back to the bond, bond article, that what it says, it's an, an amount not to exceed $59,500,000 issued for the purpose of financing these uh, improvements that are generally described as part of the bond article. So the important part is an instant, it's an amount not to exceed. So that's what the voters need to approve. An amount, that amount, uh, as Brooks said, it's, you don't necessarily have to spend it all, but you have to try to uh, obtain voter approval for what you think uh, it may cost. And as I'm sure John will tell you, you truly don't know exactly what it's going to cost until the projects go out to bid and you start getting some uh, responses in from contractors and things. But um, based on um, the estimators um, and John, this we feel um, we're comfortable going forward with this amount not to exceed and would um, provide the amount that we need to do these projects. So as I said, uh, the bond, uh, number one, there's a question not to exceed $59,500,000. <clears> it would be financed over 30 years. Currently, the rate for a bond of that size for 30 years is about 3.13%. Uh, um, there would probably be, there will likely be two to three uh, lenders involved in the project. So um, what happens is once the bond uh, is voted on by the voters, there's a 30-day period that you have to wait. So after that 30-day period, um, for any vote, which is, this is this is statute for any vote um, that the voters take um, related to the school district. Um, after that period has ended, then we can start moving forward and incurring costs related to the bond. So what will happen is before we actually go to the bond bank and sell bonds um, or use them, they sell bonds on our behalf, um, the uh, John and, and the engineers and all that need to work to put together the RFP. So that's uh, the next big step once um, voter approval is obtained is working towards getting that RFP out. Once the RFP goes out and the contractors are identified um, at the same time, I'm working on the application to the bond bank. Um, but during that period, we're incurring costs, and that's what we use a bond anticipation note for. So that it's like a line of credit. It's for a year, and it uh, covers uh, it, it covers your cash. It, it, it addresses cash flow for that period between when the bond is approved to when you actually have bond funds that you can access. And so then you can pay the interest. You can use the bond to pay the interest on the bond anticipation note. So that's included in the budget for the bond. Um, so primarily, we will be using the uh, Vermont Municipal Bond Bank for our bonds. Uh, they work with school districts and municipalities throughout the state of Vermont. So there are other school districts, other municipalities that are also doing <coughs> projects, and they pool those um, projects together, and they sell them um, they sell those in a pool. Uh, their bigger pool is in the summer. Uh, they sell them in July, the end of July, and the smaller pool is in the winter in February. So 
Um, and I also think uh, probably because of the size of the project, we'll probably also be uh, speaking with uh, the U.S. Department of Agriculture and through their rural development um, arm uh, at a loan which would be similar to the bond in terms of 30 years and interest rate around 3% is what it runs now. Um, looking at them also as well for some portion of the project. So uh, the first step is to get voter approval and then once we do that then we start moving forward with some of these other aspects uh, of the project. So. Um, Based on uh, getting approval in March, we would anticipate moving, being in uh, four separate um, bond sales or pools. We would be in the winter of 2021, so that's February of 21, then in the summer of 2021 in July, then again in the winter of 22 and the summer of 22. Because you don't need the full 59 million or whatever it is uh, right at the beginning of the project. So we would look at, um, based on the phases uh, that John identifies, look at what would be appropriate in terms of um, act being in which bond pools for which amount. So we have the funds available um, to do the project. So the next slide. So um, this, so based on that schedule of being in these different pond pools, uh, in this coming budget, for this coming budget for fiscal year 21, we would not have any interest or principal payments uh, in our, this fiscal time period. So that's uh, July 1 of 2020 to June 30 of 2021. So we wouldn't have any uh, interest or principal during that time period. In, for our fiscal year 22 budget, we would have interest on probably the first two uh, pools that we were in, the winter of 21 and the summer of 21. In our 22 budget, we would have interest payments because when those bonds close, they delay when the first principal payment is due. So actually on the winter bonds, it's almost a year before you have your first principal payment. Uh, we just pay principal once a year in November, and then we pay interest in May and November on all bonds uh, through the bond bank. Uh, in 23, again, um, more of the um, principal and interest for the bonds coming into our budget. Um, and then finally in 24 is the full impact of all the bonds. So that would be the first year and that would be actually the maximum amount because every year after that it starts to go down a little bit because you're paying principal every, every year so your interest payments are a little bit less. So uh, 2024 would be the first year when we have the uh, full bond amount um, in, as part of our budget. So then uh, estimating uh, the bond costs. So um, estimates, so I ran estimates again based on the proposed fiscal 21 budget. So using our 21 budget, using the yield that we know right now as recommended by the tax commissioner, using the equalized pupils we have. So basically taking our current budget and I used that to run uh, the latest estimates. So um, if I were to take our fiscal year 21 proposed budget and decrease it conservatively uh, for efficiencies to be realized by operating one middle school for the district and then increase it for the highest estimated annual interest in principal payments, which we would have in fiscal year 24, um, a taxpayer with a $1,000 home will pay an additional additional taxes annually of about $265. These are estimates based on this year's budget. I mean, budgets in future years, there are a lot of variables here, but this is to at least to provide some 
uh, scope of what the impact on a taxpayer is. So what a taxpayer would do if they have a home worth $200,000, they would multiply that by two, 300,000 multiplied by three, if one and a half, if 150,000, they would multiply by 1.5. Um, so this would be a taxpayer that pays purely based on the value of their property. There are uh, taxpayers in our district that pay based on income. And taxpayers who pay based on income, it's a combination of income and property value. But for a taxpayer with a household income of 50,000, estimating, again, uh, additional taxes of $50, which is, these are similar to what we've talked about before. Um, so then finally getting back to, again, so that tonight um, the board would need to Pass sign the, the article. Except the resolution yep. and the yep. bond, or the warning. Yep. That was sent. <coughs> All right, is that where we are? Unless That's the end questions. of the presentation. Yep. yep. Okay, questions. Do we need a motion? So yeah, are there any questions <clears throat> on the presentation? I just have one quick question. Is the, um, <clears throat> so the money for the turf field is included in the money here, Correct. but whether the decision hasn't been made necessarily whether to include it or not. Okay. Correct, it's, it's in the, it's in the. It's included still correct. in the total The cost amount. is in there, yep. I, I think, you know, if the bond passes, there's a ton of decision Decisions points. to be made after the fact, but right. the money to do it was is Correct. still in, Correct. in the... Yes. Okay. I just wanted to be just clear. Just like the one-story versus two-story middle school, that Correct. decision... I just wanted be... to make sure that I yep. knew the answer to that particular yep. question. Any other questions? Okay, so the first motion would be to accept the resolution. I'm assuming. Um, well, you could probably well, do them both. Can do them both in the same one? The bond resolution and warning. The bond resolution and the warning? Yes. Yes. Yep. Okay, so the warning is for the special meeting and the article, polling places. It's like a typical warning that we've passed for other things. And then the resolution is yet another legal document. Correct. Because we had a bond attorney prepare this for us because there's very specific requirements when you do a bond versus a regular. So, so you pass the resolution and sign the bond warning. So mm -hmm. the resolution is gotcha. your Covers um, the bond approval warning. of this moving okay. forward with this bond warning. Yeah. Um, Expresses your intent to move forward. Does anybody need me to read this resolution? Or do you have it? I did have a question about the date. I just wanted to make sure that when it says uh, submitted to the legal voters at a special meeting thereof to be called and held on March 3rd. Yep. That's correct? It's not February 24th? The town meeting day, that's considered a special meeting. It's March 3rd, that's what, yes, we're going to actually have a budget or a bond hearing on February 24th at 8 at the high school. Yep. It's informational. Right, the informational, right. But I did, I did have that reviewed, so. So we work with, um, Paul Giuliani is an attorney that works with, I would say, the majority of school districts in the state of Vermont in doing these bond warnings because they do have a lot of um, requirements and things, steps that we have to follow. So we did work with him on that. So the motion would be to accept the resolution and the warning? All in one? Yep, and then Liz is here to sign it. Okay. Can I have a motion? Make a motion to accept the resolution and the warning. I'll second it. Any other questions, comments, discussion? I would just say in your uh, your in your underneath where you guys are posting this, mm -hmm. Merchants Bank doesn't exist anymore. Where? I'm well. I'm looking at the email attachment you sent. And I was going the places the places you're going to post this. Yeah. Publication. Merchants Bank doesn't exist anymore, and you've got that listed as a place in Fairhaven you're going to put it? Bank. Community bank. Okay. I, I have it electronically. I can change that. Okay. And, and who's the clerk? 
Uh, Liz. Liz is the district clerk. It's different from the board clerk. So when it, anytime it mentions clerk in here, it's referring to? Liz. In this case, yes. Any other questions? Castleton, and it's called Merchants. It's called well, it's Community Bank. Haven. It's in Fairhaven, sorry. Oh. Community Bank. Okay. Got it. <coughs> yep. okay, she changed it. All right, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. It has passed, and yep, there it is for Liz to sign. All right, so that's the innovation project. Now we have the budget presentation. Oh, I was going through. Well, I was looking at, I was looking at the other locations too. Is a budget presentation one of these things too? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I've been working to make it like three years, I think, right? It's been like community, I believe. <laughs> So um, I hope Cheryl, Cheryl sent you all the budget yep. last week. Um, I think it might have been last Thursday, so hopefully you've all had a chance to look at that. I know um, the actual budget was, I believe, 74 pages. <laughs> so um, and just to give you a little context, too, um, and I'm sure Cheryl will bring this up later, but um, with the change to the chart of accounts, Again, um, some of the things don't line up as they have in years past. Next year, we look forward right. to a budget lining up. That, that lines up. And it's also our first year as a fully merged district. So again, we yeah, had to kind of dissolve the SU, bring in Orwell. You know, it's, it, we did that the year before, but it was, still was a little messier with the new software we had in the chart, new chart of yeah, accounts. Yeah, but We're thank you there. for all you do, because I read that article. About oh, that the lovely district. Oh. Who piloted it. Oh, I didn't yet see it. continues oh, to I'll have share it with you. absolutely amazing amount of problems with payroll. And oh yeah. Came, it was ugly. The yeah. article was ugly. <laughs> we came through it amazingly well. We really and did. I you know, the business office staff worked. I mean, <clears throat> it's been a year long project and I mean the last thing you want is to have issues with people getting paid and yeah. everything else um, you know right now we're getting ready to issue w-2s we have to issue w-2s off all three of our old data you know old databases new databases combine people from one database to the other there we're almost there in terms of getting through all that yeah. compliance but well, yeah thank you very much. it can be a big mess and um, we worked really hard and I'm really yeah. proud of yeah. thank um, you. And I think what we managed be. to yeah. do with it and I think so. it's a real testament to the skill oh, and yeah. hard work of our business oh, yeah. office so definitely we're very fortunate to have them all that's for sure <laughs> all right yeah, so you. um every day <laughs> for them. as we go through this um, budget presentation very similar to last year I wanted to put kind of our foundational belief statements 
up um, just as a reminder um, of what we believe as a district. Um, enrollment summary. Um, what we did this year, last year you had this, it was just K-12. This year we included um, the pre-K numbers um, in that summary, but as you can see, um, our enrollment does continue to go down a bit. Budget objectives, um, pretty consistent with what we had last year. Um, definitely social emotional learning. This budget's reflective of the need in that area. Um, continued um, professional development support for the shift to personalized proficiency based learning. Um, there's also um, <laughs> um, also to address um, this budget is also reflective um, of the deferred maintenance needs that continue in some of our buildings um, as even if the bond passes that won't be instituted you know we won't start on that project till next year equity and opportunity for all students so look, looking at those pieces um, efficiencies throughout the system and then value for taxpayers so these are all things that we kept in mind when developing um, this budget additional considerations um, we're still experiencing a significant increase in the number of students impacted by trauma um, when they're you know in the home and then coming to school um, we're seeing you know increases in percentages of students with social emotional needs and then coupled with the decrease in mental health health services across the state which is putting the increased burden on school systems um, locals even though our special education um, numbers have re percentages have remained relatively status quo the complexity um, in the needs of the students has increased dramatically we've created some um, in-district alternative program alternative programming to help support um, these students and this budget's reflective of that we've had an increased projected increased cost of health insurance premiums of 13 percent also um, coupled with that um, the new state bargained plan um, also has the employee or the district paying the first dollar <coughs> on health reimbursement accounts prior to this the employee was paying the first dollar so it's a shift in cost to the district so expenses due to deferred maintenance across the building specifically at the high school still struggling with that we're going out to bid on transportation and food service contracts this year and we're not sure you know we're not sure exactly what to expect with that so um, this budget um, is you know reflective of some uncertainty in that area Decreased revenues in tuition for small and, and small schools grants. Um, Orwell no longer receives it. So there's a decrease in revenue in that area. Back in the fall, we added the universal breakfast and lunch program, which um, I would say and other administrators at the table can definitely chime in. I've, we've had huge increases in precipita or precipitation. Precipitation. Well, maybe that too. <laughs> um, <laughs> Um, participation um, in in those programs and we have a decrease in equalized pupils of about three percent any questions on any of that so far okay. projected staffing changes um, a reduction of 3.5 full-time equivalent staffing um, is reflected in this budget with the addition of 1.4 um, regular education IA and ELL um, teacher so total reductions 2.1 um, full-time equivalent in staff over the last three years we've been able to gain efficiencies um, in, in the system and you know keep pace with the declining enrollment and there's been st total staffing reductions of about 13 full-time equivalent positions largely gained through attrition so 
every time you know there is attrition in the system looking at do we need to rehire that position what what does that look like so um, oh, okay all right do you want to do that sure. article on? I can start um, so the first article and we talked about this at the last um, board meeting that we talked about the budget uh, after the finance can be met and uh, we're recommending uh, an article to transfer to the capital reserve fund from uh, general fund surplus balance in the amount of two hundred thousand dollars again uh, that would bring us to having I think it was five hundred you said after this transfer so that's really um, you know that's five hundred thousand dollars over six buildings uh, am I right the number of buildings right six yep. depending on um, the long term to deal with um, capital needs that may come up included in those funds are some of the legacy funds that transferred from uh, the prior school districts that uh, still are earmarked uh, for those specific buildings but we need to start building kind of an overall um, reserve to deal with that so there would be an article for that for uh, transferring two hundred thousand dollars so then moving on to the article for the budget uh, that this is the actual uh, language that appears in the article for the budget this is by statute I think before um, you all before all the districts merged you started to see this new language that um, we uh, needed to use in um, our budget warning so it says shall the voters of the school district approve the school board to expend twenty six million six hundred twenty three thousand forty one dollars which is the amount the school board has determined to be necessary for the ensuing fiscal year it is estimated that this proposed budget, if approved, will result in education spending of $16,663.02 per equalized pupil. This projected spending per equalized pupil is 3.66% higher than spending for the current year. Um, so that's uh, the language for the article. Um, and you can stop me if somewhere in here you have a question because I'll just keep going along in terms of the slides so um, what this what I will do is show you how we <coughs> go from our budget to our to the tax rates so on uh, the expenditure budget is the amount that the voters of the towns need to approve then local revenues are revenues that the school district receives some of those are in the form of block grants for special education tuition um, some reimbursements for special education um, some fees that we get to take for um, uh, our from our grant funds uh, a variety of sources so local revenues being four million six hundred thirty eight thousand six hundred eighty nine dollars and that also includes ninety nine hundred thousand dollars of prior year surplus which is the same that was put into the current year's budget so that's uh, level uh, so that gives that results in education spending of twenty one million nine hundred eighty four nine hundred and eighty four thousand three hundred and fifty two dollars our equalized pupils um, as far as I know these are our final numbers um, one thousand three hundred nineteen point three five equalized pupils so equalized pupils is where we start moving into the formula that starts equalizing across the state all the components of the funding formula so equalized pupils is a formula based on a two-year average of average daily membership that's like enrollment and then students are weighted for uh, if they're uh, if uh, they're Eng if they're learning English uh, if they're if there's poverty uh, high school students are weighted more so all this weighting goes in so that across the state from one school district to the next when you look at pupils it 
kind of evens the playing field with regard to the types of pupils and students that school districts uh, have and are budgeting for. So then uh, we take education spending divided by equalized pupils and we get education spending per equalized pupil. And that's the amount that shows on the warning, the $16,663.02. And I just, as a point of reference in the uh, commissioner's letter, he uh, or she noted that um, the estimated state average for FY21 um, was $17,133. Again, to just give you a little perspective on um, where we are compared to the uh, estimated state average. Um, so this uh, gives you kind of a, a picture in terms of the breakdown our, of our budget. So the big uh, blue section that you see on the right side, that's 55% of our budget is made up of wages, and 20, another 20% 20 uh, is made up of benefits. So 75% of the school district's budget is wages and benefits. That, you know, that makes sense. Uh, it's, we're, we have a lot of people involved with working with our students. Uh, that's typical for school districts. So then the, uh, the next largest area is um, <coughs> other purchase services, uh, which includes transportation and tuition. So I just broke this down really according to the way the chart of accounts breaks down. Some of the separations maybe aren't hugely meaningful, but you can see there that really supplies only makes up <coughs> about 5% of the budget compared to all the, the other things that we spend our money on here. So some of the considerations uh, with regard to the tax rate. So uh, the yield was announced by the tax commissioner. Uh, so that is a recommendation <coughs> made to the State Board of Ed, uh, $10,883. Um, the yield assumes statewide education spending increasing about 5% and pupil decreases of a 5.53%. Uh, as I stated before, the average was noted to be, estimated to be about $17,000. We're coming in at 16663 and it's the legislature that finally sets the yield. So as we go through the le legislative session, they get information about uh, school districts, they get information about the <coughs> education fund, and then they finally set the yield. Um, based on all that information. But for our purposes, we start with what the tax commissioner has recommended to the legislature. Um, merger incentives, uh, we, in, for the fiscal 21 budget, um, we will still have, uh, this is the second to last year of merger incentive of four cents. Uh, all taxpayers benefit from the merger incentive. Um, the maximum allowable increase, there's a maximum um, plus or minus 5%. So the all towns are going to reach the equalized tax rate except for West Haven. West Haven uh, it has not reached it yet. Um, and I'll, we'll look at that again on another slide. So the idea is uh, as you merge, all the districts are moving towards that equalized rate and the equalized rate is before the common level of appraisal. So we take education spending per equalized pupil, we divide it by the yield that has been recommended by the tax commissioner and, commissioner, and that gives us the estimated equalized tax rate for FY21, $1.53. The incentive is applied to that, so the, um, the amount uh, after incentive is $1.49. So this is before each town's common level of appraisal is applied to this tax rate. Um, so compared to the current year for FY21, like I said, $1.49. 
uh, for this year, the equalized tax rate after the incentive. And so this year we have a six cent incentive is about a dollar forty five. So the change is um, four point three cents. Um, so uh, this uh, I found last week that on the um, Vermont Department of Taxes site that they've put out their report that gives information about percent of taxpayers that based on pay based on income. So this is they put that out in January. So this is this year's uh, information. So some of these percentages changed a little bit from what um, we've seen before and um, what the finance uh, committee saw. Um, so uh, this is showing that West Haven is coming in with 80, almost 81 percent of taxpayers in West Haven paying based on income, um, with the lowest being uh, Fairhaven with uh, 65, about 65 percent paying based on income. Then there's another, and so when they pay based on income, it's, so based on income and based on the value of your home and what you pay in property tax, there's kind of a, it's a gradation in terms of how much you're income sensitized and how much you're paying in taxes <coughs> until you're over the threshold, which I think it's a hundred and I can, I'll, I'll get that information. Uh, I think it's about, a, I think it was 135, I think it might be 140,000. So after, over that, your household income, I think over 140,000, um, you're paying based on property. Uh, but between 47 and that amount, it's a combination of income and um, what your, the value of your home and what you would pay in taxes. Um, there's another group of homeowners uh, that have uh, with a low household income, um, so you can see that percentage there, and they also get some income sensitivity on their entire tax bill. So just showing you, again, um, the homeowners in your districts that um, fall under that. So in uh, FY20, the household income cap percentage was 2.36%, and in 21, um, based on this budget, 2.49%. Um, so this chart are, it shows the preliminary tax rates district by district. Uh, so the <coughs> equalized, from the equalized tax rate, then the common level of appraisal for each town is applied. So the common level of appraisal is what takes the, the um, real estate, the market value, the, real, of the value of real estate in the town based on the market and it adjusts again statewide uh, for that because uh, depending on um, where property is selling relative to the assessment, uh, the assessment is what creates the grand list. So what this does is it takes into account when um, properties are selling either more or less than uh, their assessed value. So this corrects for that in the funding formula. Is it like a, a, a look back window when they yes. look at? This, it's about, I think it's about two years that it looks back. They do, they, I think it's about, a, I think the CLA lags about two years uh, on this. And it looks at one year's worth of activity? I think it's two, I think it's a couple years worth. I don't know, I haven't spent a lot of time on the details of it. It's a couple years back and uh, it may average a couple years. And I don't even know how they, and it's not necessarily even all the sales in the town. I don't know how it gets done. Um, I can find out more for you if you want to know. But yeah, that's that's um, my uh, level of knowledge at this point on the CLA. Um, so the CLA um, for every town. Uh, this, the common level ha of appraisal has changed since last year. In most cases, uh, the CLA went down, and so when the CLA goes down, 
uh, that increases tax rates, but for one town, um, actually two towns, Fairhaven's uh, common level of appraisal went up from uh, 108.02% to 108.59%. And Orwell's common level of appraisal went up from 101.46% to 102.11%. So Fairhaven and Orwell had slight increases in their common level of appraisal. So when the common level of appraisal goes up, it has an inverse effect on the tax rate. So when we get to the actual homestead rate that appears on the bill, uh, it, uh, the effect is a little less. Um, Benson, Castleton, <coughs> Hubberton, and West Haven all had increases, the largest in the group being uh, West Haven's um, common level of appraisal went down um, by 6.62. It was 104.09, and it went down to 97.2. So that does have an effect on the tax rate. Uh, the smallest of our decrease of our increases was Castleton with 2.55. So the others are between 6.62 and 2.55. So um, the equalized tax rate, we apply the common level of appraisal. So then you see the homestead tax rate for the school district that appears on uh, a taxpayer's uh, bill uh, in combination with the, their municipal tax rate. So here you can see what the FY20 uh, tax rates, the tax rates are for this year by town. So. Again, this is preliminary, and these are estimates using the commissioner's recommended yield based on the proposed budget. So it's a uh, tax rate uh, increase between uh, of a high of 16 cents for West Haven and a low of about two cents for Orwell. Um, so the next, this shows you how over time, uh, so each line represents, so I can't, there we go. Um, each line represents uh, a town. West Haven is the one, the green one that shows the big change. Um, so you can see when uh, the districts were not merged that the tax rates varied and, and some of them showed, uh, you know, a, some up and down. Uh, and these are the equalized homestead rates. These are before the common level of appraisal. So this is before that CLA is applied. So these are the tax rates showing you uh, what's happening. And uh, with all the districts in FY21 having the same rate with West Haven um, coming up to that rate um, gradually. And then the next slide. This one is what tax rates do when you take the common level of appraisal and apply it. Because now, with the common level of appraisal, it's everybody's, you don't have one rate for the school district, everybody has their own rate. So you can see how, with the common level of appraisal, what that does in terms of tax rates. Just a little bit more kind of up and down and uh, moving around. Uh, so yeah. that's. Yeah. Questions? Tim sent me a few questions, and I'm happy to answer those. Three years for the CLA, three years I looked it up. Oh, three years. It's three. It goes three years back. Yeah. And how many? How many years of sales? Is it one year or a couple years? I don't know. So it goes three years back for the CLA. It goes three years back. They look three years back to determine the CLA. So there, there's a definite lag there. And at some point, if when districts get to, I don't know, 70 something percent, they, towns need to reappraise um, because it needs that. 70% um, so they are required to? Yes, if the CLA gets too far, they need to do a reappraisal. If it gets too 
too far below or 100. Is not when it's high. They don't have to read. I don't think they have to reappraise it at high. A yeah, high below and a low. 85 percent. I'm just reading this. Okay, I've, thank you. Or above 115 <laughs> percent. 115. Okay. 15. And that changed in 2019. Oh, okay. So you would have known, but it's very recent. <laughs> okay. Thank you <laughs> for covering for me, Casey. I think you're here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not giving you any I'm, I'm usually uh, you won't let it so yeah, yeah. <laughs> It takes time to get all <laughs> this that figured out. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, so uh, towns need to reappraise uh, at some point if they're common level. If, if appraised values in the town are not really reflective anymore of uh, what the market is doing in a town. And a lot of what we're doing, you know, with just to kind of tie things together, part of what we're doing with the bond is looking at, um, you know, that a desirable towns, uh, if school districts have a town that's desirable, you'll see families wanting to move into those towns. And obviously that helps uh, in terms of sales for a town. So the, uh, the hope would be that um, by doing the project that we've talked about and um, you know, moving, changing our model and putting in uh, updating our facilities, so they're current with current educational uh, philosophy and practices that that starts to attract families to the towns and helps to um, maintain and support property values in, in our towns. So just tying things all together for you. Cheryl, when the income sensitivity piece, does that apply just to the school portion of the tax? Yes. Um, well, no. There's, uh, there's actually a worksheet. Uh, I, th uh, I have to look at the worksheet. I have it. There's a worksheet that um, the Vermont Department of Taxes um, has. I can't remember if I have it in innovation or budget file. Um, I don't remember. Uh, you mean if it affects uh, municipal one? taxes too? Taxes. Yeah, I think it's. Hmm. It does. I think it does. Uh, I'll find it for you as we're talking. It's not that important. Um, but. Uh, So there is a worksheet uh, on the Ver Vermont Department of Taxes website, and I think probably what we'll do is we will reference that for folks so that they can go in and um, kind of look at themselves because it is based on household income. It's based on um, what folks pay um, in taxes including, I think, it, I think it does include in some part municipal taxes as well. I, and I will find it. Do you think it does? Yeah. Yeah. I can't remember. It's in one of my two I'm folders. I'm asking my father. He's on the hill. Okay. <clears throat> Cheryl, do you have the language for the warning? Uh, so the, um, yes, I do. Here, let me pass it down. So this. Somebody who'd like. So that you can pass that down. That's the warning. So the. The article for the um, 200,000 is on there, the and the article as I described it for the budget. And then you have your other, you um, have your four other, elections. right? Your other articles that are included. In that. So I will okay. to talk. And well, um, Tim did have a couple questions, and if you want, I can sure, quickly answer those. So. Uh, Tim asked if we reduce the budget for electricity, electricity based on consideration for uh, the solar project, and yes, uh, about 31 percent, kind of not knowing exactly when that's all going to come online. We were somewhat conservative on that, so um, Chris and I talked about it and we felt that was fair um, at this point. Uh, health insurance, so uh, as I said in the presentation, um, health insurance, so the rates for FY21 have been not been approved by DFR, the Department of Finance and 
something else. They set uh, insurance rates in the state of Vermont. Uh, they've asked Beehive for more information. So the rates uh, for next year on the four types of plan uh, are increasing between 14.17% and 12.9%. The 12.9% increase is the gold CDHP. So um, the vast majority of our uh, staff are on uh, the gold CDHP. I think we've got four employees that are not on the gold CDHP. And so that they uh, let us know they're looking at an increase of 12.9%. I budgeted 13%. Um, for that increase because I also never know how people are going to change in terms of plans. They could come during open enrollment, they can come on, they can go off, they can get married, they can have families, any number of things can happen. So we try to work with those and also when you have change in staff, um, we need to absorb that. We take a look and we try to, in January, I go through and make the changes that we know about based on uh, the open enrollment uh, that we just had in January, and then we go from there. Um, he, Tim, asked about the decision of the... You, but, so yeah. you've not yet been able to calculate a cost for the change in the, um, the statewide mandate. We don't know what that's going to cost us yet. Well, I mean, we, so... The, so first of all, the, and that's what I went on to tell you, uh, is that the decision for teachers, for the, so the new plans don't start until January 1st of 2021. So that's six months of the FY21 budget. Um, and for support staff, it's status quo for 18 months. So what we currently pay for support staff is uh, what we've negotiated in the master, master agreement. So it's six months of uh, this current budget. Uh, the premium share is the same as what we currently do now, 80-20. So uh, we don't have that uh, as an impact to us. Uh, the impact will be that the uh, state's plan, the state will only have an HRA um, unless um, folks choose the silver CDHP. And as I said before, except for four people right now, everybody is in the gold CDHP. So anybody that picks the gold and the premium, the, the premium of the gold uh, is most advantageous, Pre combination of premium and deductible is the most advantageous to employees. So it kind of pushes everybody into that gold CDHP. Um, but um, staff will not have the option of an HSA, and there are some staff that do have an HSA now that will not be able to access it. They will only have an HRA available to them. So the change for us is in the HRA in that the, um, right now um, with our HRA as negotiated, the employees pay first on the out-of-pocket either $400 or $800 based on whether they're on a single or a two person and above. The uh, decision of the arbitrator flops that. Uh, the employer pays first and the employee pays on the back end. So it's not until you go through, the employee goes through the amount of funds uh, for the employer share of the HRA that they start paying in the out of pocket. So the HRA gets charged the actual, we charge it to the budget as it's incurred. So we get information from <coughs> our third party administrator and we charge those costs based on actual. So then, so what do you do for a budget? Um, there's different philosophies with regard to that. Um, I budget 75% of the value of an HRA <clears throat> because you're going to have some people that use their full HRA and some people that may use very little of the HRA. So we're starting to build some history. We've got one full year in the HRA. There's industry um, standards or industry parameters that say it's somewhere it could be anywhere between you know it could be between 65 and you know 80 something percent so 
Uh, I did 75% in looking at our utilization uh, up until the point I budgeted. That looks reasonable and still gives, I think that still allows for enough room for the six month swap on when, uh, for six months of next year's budget when the employer will pay first as opposed to the employee paying first. So I feel that we're, we're covered there with regard to that. Um, does that answer your health yes, thank insurance you. questions? Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, general increase in paraeducator salaries, yes. Uh, the master agreement, there, we're the, that's an increase. Uh, the, the support staff master agreement, uh, FY21 is the last year of the agreement. Um, I would say the philosophy was to make some adjustments in salaries for support staff. We were finding um, <coughs> the salaries were low. We weren't we're able lowest. to attract or retain uh, staff, and uh, obviously turnover has a cost. So yes, uh, there is an increase, and in pretty much the level of paraeducators hasn't changed. The utilization of them changes almost continually, daily. almost daily, <laughs> continually. Um, so count is stable it's pretty yes Seven, 72 72 in the budget and that's what we have now okay thank you okay. Uh, oh central so you asked about central office overall up or down so when we were in SU it was very easy to see the central office cost because basically the central office was contained in the supervisory union budget and that was kind of its own separate budget with some other special ed areas and things included in it. Uh, so now it is in the budget, but it's just, it's on pages. Basically, the central office appears um, from pages 34 to 39, and also on page 41, that's where the special ed uh, piece of it is. Um, so it's broken out into several functional areas. It was in the SU budget, you just didn't notice it because it was kind of self-contained in the SU and now it's part of the whole budget. Again, it's a little hard to totally compare apples and apples, um, again, trying to um, align, get our alignment with the, uh, the state chart of accounts. And also, um, we have a communications person in, as part of the central office now, but that was a position that was another position that was, it, it was a tech position that was hired, uh, switched out to this uh, Josh's position. So, um, so what I did is I just looked at the superintendent's budget and fiscal services, and overall that <coughs> is a, a decrease of about $6,000, and some of that is due to some change in staffing hours and some other things. Um, so then Tim asked about um, seeing, uh, specifically there are two lines, accounts, 5431, and so the budget that you got is, the lowest level detail budget. That is it, that's all the detail. When we, when it goes in the annual reports and as I uh, do other presentations and public presentations, we'll, I'll get it summarized and maybe into a one page that's a little easier uh, for folks to look at. And you, you don't, you know, you don't see all these changes, but at the level of detail that you got, you do see the, that. So he asked specifically, there's two lines, uh, 5341 and 5431. So 5431 is non-technology repairs and maintenance. So that's really primarily for, that's a, kind of a new account that we're transitioning to using because by the, the uniform chart of accounts says that for repairs, so for professional services that you pay for related to uh, non-technology related repairs and maintenance, contracts and agreements covering the upkeep of buildings and non-technology equipment, costs for renovating, remodeling, um, uh, are not included here but included under object 450. So 
what we did is, so when Chris is budgeting, he has an idea of these larger projects that he wants to undertake to address uh, issues in the school. So in uh, this year's budget, a lot of that shows in 5341, but we should be transitioning to using 5431. So in 5431, that non-technology repair and maintenance, I know, I know. Not only is it floppy, but the numbers, you it's think. It's recategorization of the Right, you would think I've transposed the numbers, but it's really moving things to where they go. And I mean, last year we had three databases on that were all not the same. So this year, one database for the actual in FY21 budgeting in one database. So moving forward, you'll start to see things lining up and making more sense. And I know I've been saying that for a while, but um, it's. Saying it, Cheryl, it'll come true. I know. Uh, well, no, I've been saying for a while right. that we're, it's been this process of realigning uh, the budget, but it has been a process. So those were the questions Tim had for me. Anybody else? Can the same be said for, or was it 5519? Five five one nine. I did bring my handy dandy chart of accounts in case somebody said to me five 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 it shows up in several different locations. Transportation, right. So the what you have to do is so um, transportation can show up in athletics, it can show up in um, transportation to from school it can show up in field trips so there's functional areas that we have to report on so within functional areas accounts can appear multiple at times based on those functional areas so that's why uh, you do see that I think we are getting that pretty well lined up better some of that is how transportation, so when you were in SU, all the transportation had to be at the SU level. So now we're a school district, so that's changed too. I mean, you kind of have that too messed in here is that we went from a, you know, multiple school districts to last year three and this year one, and so you have that messed in there too. We're very happy. The business office is really looking forward to having a repeat of a financial year because FY21 will actually get to do everything over again for the first time in several years. All right. So it looks like I just need one motion to accept the warning for the annual meeting, right? Moved. No, no, I think so, because on this annual meeting, it states, I don't know if you guys remember those, right? You but also want to specifically have in the minutes that you've uh, approved the, the budget, budget in the amount and of the, okay. and that amount. Okay. And have that in the minutes. What about, so we don't have to worry about doing anything special for the ballot question. Right, you'll accept right. the, I, I think you need to adopt the budget first. Yep. And, and then, then do annual you, meeting. Okay. Correct. All right, approve so the warning. a motion to adopt the budget. So moved. Second. Any other discussion? Yeah. I just want to add a little commentary. Um, Cheryl, in your email there, when you summarize things, mm -hmm. you obviously mentioned the spending per equalized pupil, 16,663. Yep. And that's the number to me that is most important. That's the okay. starting point. Um, yep. I don't have the exact details in front of me, but you know, I think this is my seventh year on a school board. And I, I want to recall that that equalized per, uh, spending per pupil not too long ago was in the twelve to $13,000 range. Yep, maybe. So certainly it's not a stretch to say that that number has increased 30% mm -hmm. over the last five I don't years. Know. I don't know if that, but well, I mean, it's increased. It, yep. I mean, from the slideshow, it was, it's 5.33% in, in just last year. For statewide. Not for for the district. It's in the warning. Three right. point, so only three point six six for three point six six for the district. It's not too much of a stretch to suggest that it's increased thirty percent over a five to six year year period of time. I uh, right. I don't know. I would have to look. And then just looking at the budget, for simplicity's sake, let's just say it's a twenty five million dollar budget, and looking at the interest in principal payments on a bond mm -hmm. 
around $5 million. Mm -hmm. That's 20% of our budget is going to go towards principal and interest payments in a situation where our equalized pupils are going down more and more and more and our spending per pupil is going up, up, up. I try to come on board with this bond vote every day and I just cannot get past those numbers. They, they're not sustainable. They don't make sense to me. Um, it's got to stop. We got to stop. When we have lower pupils, we have to spend less. But we can't in our but we can't in our current configuration. Right. If we don't change our current configuration and reduce the number of buildings, we cannot do that. If you were to say, if to follow up on your husband's post, if you were to tell me that <laughs> so, we were going to be closing That's his Benson, post, not mine. <laughs> if you were to tell me that we would be closing Benson Village School to save money. I would be so on board with something like this, but it just does not make sense financially to me. I'm sorry. You can't we can't do that. We can't I know for that's two how years. You wrote the language in the in the articles and whatnot. So yeah, instead, two, of, yeah, for instead two of closing years, we can't facilities do it. We can't. to realize savings and potential, we're going to fill up the facilities with other stuff and other programs, which is just going to cost more and more and more. Well, the budget does. So the the projection on the tax rate does, as I mentioned in the uh, when I did the bond presentation, does include a conservative estimate of. Uh, efficiencies decrease in the budget as a result of bringing um, middle school students together. Uh, so it addresses, it has, it, again, it's conservative. When I say conservative, these are low amounts um, to address um, buildings that will not be, um, uh, continue to be maintained. but. I think if John was still here, yeah. he would tell you that half of the high school middle school project 30, is for work that million. needs to be done on the high school and it's the result of work and maintenance and that has not taken place at the high school and you're <coughs> at a point where it has to be our, done. Our, our equalized pupil was artificially low in the past five years before that. It was artificially low. We weren't doing what we needed to do. We were passing budgets that did not take care of our district. So they were artificially low. If we had been doing what we were supposed to be doing and doing the maintenance we were supposed to be doing, we'd probably be a lot closer when you look at the numbers between then and now. Because we were not taking care of our facilities at all. And so now you're at kind of that your crucial point this that is the we're, result of that neglect yep. it's the result of that I mean that's why I showed you where you are compared to that average that the commissioner points out um, to give you a little perspective that you're not you're not over that um, I think it's still I mean and we're not unique we tightened in the state up right this, now either this budget, they had a whole sure. well, I know we're not unique. they had a whole VPR hour about the bad the bad uh, facilities statewide and what are they going to do about it? And the amount well, of bonds and, I mean, the well, whole, it's, it's I, I think regardless of what happens with the bond, I mean, there are additional questions that need to be addressed around Benson, Castleton Village School. But the fact remains that the voters approved articles of agreement, which does not give the board or the voters authority to do anything for four years with those buildings. So, so ha you know, half of that, what was it? Um, I still and we, have that we can up here. Uh, half, I think, of the 52 million for the high school middle school project is for just for high school infrastructure. If we were to so take the middle have school to do that. out, it, it would still be about 30 million dollars, I believe, is what we discussed in building and grounds the other night. So if you were to just put forth the $30 million, then you would still need to do something with Castleton Village School or Benson because you wouldn't, you wouldn't be clo closing Castleton Village School or educationally repurposing it. You would still need to run it and this building does need some infrastructure upgrades as well. And I think it's not easy. If you, the answer, you can continue to do the same and you know, probably go along in a similar way, but if you look at perhaps what you might do for the future, perhaps that will change. And you can, you know, it will become more attractive because you have 
um, made <coughs> that investment, and it is an investment in um, the school district and the towns that are part of this school district. And I think teaching and learning wise, you're hitting a critical point at this moment where you've reduced FTEs by 13 point something. We, we, 75% yeah. of budgets are salaries and wages. And without a reconfiguration, you're you really much reaching more. a point where you cannot move yeah, we, we, staff. We, we can't reduce any anymore. And, and so a lot of the projected done savings. Done your due diligence over three years of bringing that number of FTE very close to its breaking point without doing something. Nothing else. In space. And that's. I think a physically responsible way to operate when 75% of your annual budget is salary and wages. To be continued. Oh, definitely. Oh, for sure. <laughs> oh, for sure. <laughs> I'm just saying, looking at the numbers as a non taxpayer. Are we sending the budget out to all taxpayers? We never send the full budget out no. to all taxpayers no. ever. So, but you're going to have some available at the office, I take it? Yeah. And post offices. Yeah. And town, town I mean, offices. The, the level of detail you got, I mean, I'll have probably another version that's No, maybe, he's just talking about the report that gets sent out. Oh, that's what he's talking that. about. And it'll have yeah. a summarized budget in it. Yes. And I believe we yes. made it available upon a request as well. Right. And we also put it on the website as well. And actually, if folks call, like Chelsea, at the office, we also mailed them to people's homes if they requested so last year. I hope we can get that information out. Yep. Well, we're going to put together a trifold again and write okay. that information okay. on there. If you want more detail, please, you know, okay. Good. with those places, just like we did last year. Yep. All right. So call the question. Uh, oh, go ahead. Um, when was it? Was it two years ago? There was what half a million put in for the renovation of the high school. Was it two years or last year? The renovation of the new office space? Yeah. This is the, the first budget. full year they're in there, so it was the previous year's Four budget. Years ago, and then we had huh. money in there this past year for land purchases. Yep, those were two the separate year. articles. They were yep. okay. Yep. yep. So those and those were out of um, surplus. They weren't out of. They weren't budgeted. But they were. Well, they were budgeted. It was a high school project was budgeted. The high school project. They were both budgeted. Yep. yep. <laughs> I'm assuming those have since those same funds either they're out altogether or reallocated somewhere. They're else. reallocated in there. There's yep. about five hundred and twenty nine, twenty eight thousand. I mean, I, I think part of the issue is we're at a critical point with the heating system at the high school, and I, I don't think it would be responsible to take the funds out of the budget right now. I mean, we left them in there specifically to address these needs at the high school. They, right now in the budget, they're not really directed towards the high school. Correct. They're more directed towards the other school in anticipation of this, They're currently not but in projects that the bond would cover. Right. If the bond fails, then we'll have to read oh, really yeah. where But they were all put in at one point for a one time use and they're still in there. Um, well, that, well, well, that was bond, discussed at finance. So it was never, so I remember a finance meeting where we talked about maintaining that because we were foreseeing infrastructure problems. So if we had it in there to do this, we were going to, we, I remember that conversation. Keep it in there, and keep it in, there the, in anticipation of, of other issues at the high school that we needed, that we knew were coming ahead. So yes and no, right? Yes, it was initially for that, but then it was talked about how we were going to continue that for that purpose. My son Sam's first class today, his, his classroom was 100 degrees. How can you learn? With windows open, it's just. Yeah, crazy. I mean, we're having yep. issues. Some significant issues yep. with I mean, the heating. I, I don't know what else. Probably, we spent 100000 last year to keep the heating system at the high school, and we're probably at 50 already this year to keep it running. That's money we're never going to get back. It's just money thrown That's away. with some classrooms at 96 <clears throat> degrees with the windows open. There's a, I mean, it's becoming a dire need. It was a dire need a couple of years ago. Well, say, yeah. Well, I mean, need. I don't know what what is worse than dire. I mean, it's a dire need to fix the infrastructure at the high school. It affects the education. At Correct. The high school. Correct. I would agree. Yep. Anything else? No. Okay. 
So uh, we have a motion on the floor to accept the budget as presented. So what's the amount? <clears throat> $26,623,041. Think that should be in there? Yep. Oh, we, yes. yeah. She would have. Bonnie would have written it in there. But yes. we should want to. People want to read that loud. Um, so, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Aye. All right. And so, we need a motion to accept the warning. Motion to. Is that what this is? Yes. Even though it's called annual meeting. Well, it's warning. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we are. Uh, motion to accept the warning. So moved. Second. Any questions about the warning? It's our annual meeting articles where the moderator comes and goes through all the stuff and then it has the ballot questions on there that we recess for Australian ballot. And flowers? Correct. You got it. That's seal. Even though it's seal now. Seal, oh, seal, seal hunt. Seal. Yeah, she does it for the district. Yep. Um, she's famous, so. She is. She, <laughs> mentioned the, uh, she is. She is. So let's see, do I, did I already have a first for this? Yes. And a second? Yes. Thank you. All in, any questions? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. So just those two, right? Yeah. Yes. All right. So we are moving on to principal's reports. Just questions, I guess, if people read them or if they have questions, they can always. Yeah. yeah, kind of a combined report. Um, other business then, what the uh, 403B resolution, Cheryl? Yes. Um, so um, the 403B was formally, uh, the, the name on the 403B plan was formally Addison Rutland Supervisory Union. So the 403B was the uh, supervisory union. So all this uh, is doing is uh, changing the name in the 403B plan to Slate Valley Unified Union School District we kind of skipped the middle this well even when we were modified we still had Addison Rutland so then once uh, starting in July once Addison Rutland was no longer operating I started talking yep. with uh, the folks so we just need a motion uh, so it's an adopting res resolution uh, just um, certifying that so it, the plan is amended that the man uh, Resolved that the form of amended 403B plan effective January 1 presented is hereby approved and adopted by oh, an authorized that. representative of the employer. On, and I'll have Tara that. sign it. I'll All right, can Bonnie have that language? Okay. Yep. I have a copy here for her. Okay, perfect. Let me pass that down. And All right, so an, a motion to approve what Cheryl so read. So, second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Great, thank you. School choice numbers. So every January we set the school choice numbers for the upcoming year. Um, the out um, is either 40 or 10% of the resident students, which in our case would be 36. Um, and the in, you can have an unlimited number. So my recommendation would be to have the um, out as 36 and the in as unlimited. Currently this year our school choice numbers <clears throat> are down from the previous year. We have 21 out and seven in currently. But previous year they were 29 the out. We've never hit the max. But I would recommend setting it as low as you know we legally can. Okay, oh. any questions? Do you say so moved? Yes. Second? Second. Second. Okay. Any other questions? <clears throat> All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> All right. We need an executive session. Any yeah. More other business? Yes. On your follow up on your email you had requested about people's interest. In oh, and running? Yeah. Running for the, the board again. I'm just curious what the response was. Yep. So um, I believe so. Amy is not running. No. And. Um, Trevor is not running, and we still have two open seats in Hoverton, and one uh, and one open seat in West Haven, right? 
Well, no, that's Angela. Tra- well, Tanya is here. Yeah. Are you, Tanya? Are you running? Yeah. So Tanya, so, you got so your we petition have tra- in. Okay. Yeah. So we're. Did you get your petition in, Mike? Petition has been filed. Awesome. Thank you. And Patty believes her husband believes and hers has been Bob. filed. And Rebecca <laughs> needed. And Rebecca, you filed. Yep. And did you find somebody to do the Benson? No. Okay. So we might have a Benson open seat. And two and Hubbardton. Then Dave found Trying. one. I know. Dave right, found tonight. somebody in Orwell. So we have that petition in Orwell for that seat because Dave Dave Carpenter is not John Wurzbacher. John Wurzbacher. He was on he it before. On the board. And he was on this yep. board initially. Yep. Um, before yep. he moved to Orwell. Yep. So. So yeah. So that so it's means... looking pretty similar to what we have right now. Does that still mean you're missing one West Haven? Only yeah. We're missing one West Haven. We will be missing Benson, one West Haven because of tra- Trevor. One Benson, one Benson and two Hubberton, which. So that's four down. So that means only four other board members can miss every any time there's a meeting. Right. Because we have to have nine. No, ten. Ten, ten for quorum. quorum. So just keep that in mind. Um, should we talk about we are party one meeting? Yeah, yeah. I mean some something that some of you brought up to me was the idea of proposing one board meeting a month and just have it be a longer board meeting but only have it once a month um i don't know i can certainly draft a schedule um that's representative of that i don't know what folks thoughts are my only thing would be that in march we have a reorganization meeting on march 9th and i do think it's important that we start off the new terms or (laughs) year um with a board retreat. So I would suggest that we have a board retreat possibly the end of March. So March might be a month where you'd have two meetings. And I mean, we'd have committee meetings as well, but um, I don't know if you want me to attempt to structure it as one meeting a month, if if folks feel that's more doable, because I know people had concerns over their schedules. I'm happy to do whatever. But how would you do the committee meetings it would just be not before a board meeting some of them well finance could be before a board meeting if the innovation project quite if, if it passes quite frankly building and grounds Higher is going to have meetings. to be much longer meetings anyway it won't work before a board meeting so I mean I think if you're somebody who just can only commit to one meeting meeting a month then maybe you don't serve on building and grounds I mean I don't you know yeah. I don't know I think it's going to depend on schedules and you can also do the you know the alternative meeting date that we would have for committee yeah right so i mean you can do like brooke says have them beforehand (coughs) particularly buildings and grounds if it's going to be two hours then you just have it well probably either way that committee will have work to do um (laughs) and also we will we're still doing teacher negotiations and we'll have support staff negotiations next year as well so there'll be plenty of committee meetings (laughs) yeah but if we do do it once a month, which I think is fine, and Brooke has talked to other, you know, districts, and they do do Some once do. a month. Some it's, do. It's a mix. But you make sure you eat dinner or you bring a snack and a drink and just know that you're going to be here for a while. And that's and, and then there could be the potential for a special meeting. If something dramatic comes up yeah. or something you have to deal with, you might have a special meeting. So I think as long as we all know that, then I think it's And fine. I would plan for that one meeting a month to rotate between all of the schools. Mm-hmm. So that's what the, the schedule would yeah. look like. So calling in as an option as well as there's teams there's technology stuff out there so right there, there is even yeah. though you're not there we could do zoom or google hangouts I yeah mean, there's absolutely definitely different ways yeah. to do stuff to get people yep you're right i don't know if i'd want to do if it's one really long what's your definition of really long <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that, like midnight I'm, I'm wondering what did, you're thinking of one really long i mean i'm thinking board, right? i'm thinking that probably no later than i would think 9 30. i mean we're going to be 9 30 tonight well but a lot of our meetings go to I mean, that anyway uh this is our 10 o'clock a month. <laughs> anyway <laughs> i don't know a lot of them get, get done around 7 38 yeah. o'clock we did have a little emergency. I don't know. I think it's worth a try. And then <laughs> In all fairness. It's worth a try. <laughs> no, we feel like it's well, not you know what? We'll I can bring two different drafts. You can think about it. I'll bring two different drafts in March, and you can tell me which one you want to go with. <laughs> so we can go that way. Um, I just so, have a couple other little yep. announcements. Um, February 24th is the informational meeting for the budget at 7 o'clock at the high school. 
Directly after that at 8 o'clock is the bond informational meeting at the high school. So um, the bond informational meeting, the school board actually runs that meeting. Oh, okay. So they run the presentation for the bond um, and they, they do the question pieces. I suppose there's no, legally there's no moderator for that. I suppose if you wanted to see if somebody like Seal would be also willing to do that, I could certainly ask her, but I just wanted you to be aware of that. Otherwise it's the school board who runs that informational meeting for the bond. So okay. I don't know what your feelings are on that, but you know. Let me know and we can do, you know, we can do that. The other thing is February 10th in our, in, um, we've been trying to, well, we've put together kind of communications plan for the bond. I know several of us are doing a peg TV spot on Monday. Um, Peter's offered to be there as part of the chair of building and grounds. Julie's off, offered to be there as the board chair. Um, Cheryl, Casey, Chris, and I are going to speak on the different components of the bond, and we've asked CL Hunt to moderate that for us, like a 30-minute segment. So, um, so we're working on putting that together. Um, that we will record that on Monday, but also on February 10th, we have a board meeting. But we're wondering because we went through the entire calendar and the best night to have a community forum is actually February 10th. Just due to all the different sporting events <coughs> and we have step up night at the high school and there's just a lot of crazy stuff going on the next few weeks. So I'm wondering if it is at all possible to have a short board meeting at like, I don't know if it's possible for you to be here at 530. If it's not, maybe we do six and then have like a community forum at seven. I don't know if that's it. Place is something on the 24th? No, this is the 10th. February 10th, we have a board meeting. I'm right. wondering if there's a way to move the board meeting. To, we don't need finance necessarily because so, you just approved the budget. So, Tim, community forum is like the same thing that we did where we invited the community to come to the high school and we let them kind of walk around and look. So it's another opportunity to get, get more information about the bond in a little bit of a different format we were thinking of, and but it's just another opportunity I think we're thinking that. of having three sections, one on finance, one on educational pieces, and one on infrastructure, and then having a group rotate between these 20-minute segments, but having it at 7 p.m., but having a short board meeting before it maybe 5.30, and I don't know if that's doable or not, but that's the time that our committee meetings start anyway, so I don't know if folks are okay with that. There is a mm -hmm. girls basketball game. There is a game, that two games. That, yeah, there's a game I know there's there. a game, but I was told it was away. No, no, it's home. Boys are away, girls are home. Well, I don't know what date then. That's the 10th. To do it. Every night there's something, so. Um, I am going to have a table at step up night on the high on the sixth at the high school to talk about the innovation project. I don't know if you just want to skip another community another forum. community forum. I just I mean we're going to send out another flyer. We'll have the bond the informational district, meeting well, district uh, music festival at the high school as well. I know you were talking about having a table on the sixth. Yep, on the seventh, the Friday. Because that's district music festival, so that's like everybody. You're gonna get a lot of people. More people than step up. Yes. Just looking. Right, just but it's not just district. That's the whole state. That's Green Mountain State. At our at our school. I know. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's 400. Five, yeah, I don't. You're gonna get a lot of, get a lot of people. You don't. I mean, we can definitely put the information out. I just don't. I mean, we'll be at step up night. I don't know what other date, because we have negotiations on the 5th. We've got, I mean, we have something every night, so. The only way to not have a conflict would be to put it on a Sunday. Sunday. Do you think we get people on a Sunday? Well, the building's unavailable every weeknight, including Saturday. Why is that, there's a basketball game, but why does that make it unavailable? Maybe we'd get more people. We just won't have it well, in the gym. Like right. I mean. Mm -hmm. Yeah, have it in the library. You go in the gym. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you look in the gym, they're playing basketball, but the rest basketball of the... Basketball late lately? That parking lot's pretty crowded on, a basketball, on any basketball night right now. Who are we playing that night? Huh? Uh, it's a girls it's game. It's a girls game, but... They're both undefeated. They're both, they're both undefeated. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Attracting gym large crowds. for any one of those the games right now. Full. The parking will be yeah. fun. People won't come. Games are fun to go to. They 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 they'll go watch the game. <laughs> 
<laughs> games are done about eight. Yeah, I was just going to say that. What do you want to do it as a half time? Oh, yeah. Eight thirty. Eight thirty. Usually about eight thirty. The games are done. Oh right, but is that what you're thinking? What no, I'm just saying. No, I'm not. But I'm Can just you saying. Do something for half time. Yeah. I'll be picking yeah. up the garbage. In you the think house. people would come at eight thirty? No, no. like a half time show. What do they do at the half time show? Well, it's like six you're minutes. Just, really sleep. Sleep. Yeah. What is the it's called a short. It. It's called a Pixar short. I don't know. Do a little before? <laughs> Halftime? I don't know. What do you. I don't know. Personally, I wouldn't. Make something really exciting. No, I don't know. I wouldn't go what over well. I would role play. <laughs> Parking's a problem like this. I think parking is going to be it's, right now. I mean, what if we do it at Fairhaven Grade School? I don't know. Do it at a different school. Or do you think that everyone will be at the games? Yeah, <laughs> yeah they will. Games. Well, I hate they to tell you, but we have well. games at the grade school that right night, now. too. <laughs> I got them all written right there. You have to lock the doors. I'm not letting people in. Right. They've yeah. had to do that. So what are you going to do in that sense? Because we were exceeding the capacity yeah, for the fire. Well, well, the other thing the we could do, what's the that week of the 24th? I know we have the bond informational meeting on the 24th, but could we have another? Like on the night of the 26th, do another information. I don't know. Do it after break. I mean, it's before the vote or the night before the vote. That's town meeting. Do it the night before town meeting. meeting. Town meetings. Do it, do it, do it. They don't all meet. Yeah, they do. Well, uh, just night? about. Yeah, I thought night. some met at the, during oh, the day. Only or well, I think the only one oh. that still goes from oh. the floor. Yeah. Benson might too. Oh, Benson does too. Yeah. Do you guys vote meet during the day in yeah, Benson? Yeah, Benson meet. Oh, what? Uh -huh. what are you talking about? No, but you have town, town meeting. meeting. The day oh, we have a town meeting. Yeah. yeah. They don't do any votes. Well, the, well, the only other time. option is the 26th of February, and I don't know what games are on that night. There are. Well, they should be in play. If it's a Wednesday, they should be in playoffs. Yeah. By then. Chris, do we have anything going right on the 26th? That was the original night of the Vermont Youth Project, no. which has been changed to the night 25th. before. There are yeah. any. And we have we negotiations the 27th. Informational meeting what? on the 24th. Do it on the 24th. We already have the informational meeting. Well, we are. <laughs> do it after that. Well, we are. We have it. No, but do it, do it do after that. Do it before or do whatever right. you want. Combine the, the different the components meeting. as part of the meeting. Because on the you already 24th. have people coming for the budget, so then they'll be, the, and they're coming for the bond information meeting. Do you think that's enough? I don't know. What do you end up with? got. got to capture the audience. It's yeah. the only thing that makes sense to me. You started yeah. earlier in the evening. Oh, so do it at like five. Have have like an open house tours on like the twenty fourth, and do the budget informational meeting at seven, and do like the bond informational like It'll just have a one meeting a month. Yeah. Wide open. Yeah. Then you have Symposium. somebody do a potluck supper. <laughs> All right. All right. Let me. Somebody should have a spaghetti dinner. All right. Raise then we'll leave the board meeting the same on the tenth, and let me. Well, or or you just have it at the informational meeting. Yeah, that's what they we're saying. The twenty-four. At eight o'clock. And questions. and just say we'll stay after if people want to still tour the building and look and around. And ask questions. Yeah, and have specific questions for finance, for buildings and grounds, and for education. Both. Yeah. Yep. Um. You're doing it at 5.30, so you're saying? I don't know what I I'm say doing. do it after. Right no, I do it all. I you do, do it before? The, the budget meeting first. Well, well the budget you, meeting has to be at 7, seven and the oh, bond meeting to has to be at 8. Right. Those are set now. Just right. the bond meeting has to be a public meeting, has to have meeting minutes, so we can't run right. around the high school during <laughs> the official bond. <laughs> No, I think, I think we have the bond meeting. You close the meeting, and then you say if anybody wants to stay after and look at any of the infrastructure stuff, you're welcome to the, you know, we'll stay behind. Yeah, we I don't know. Offer small tours. Or right. Well, wow. it'd be a late night, but it'd be done. So they're coming out another night. <laughs> All right. Bring a sleeping bag. All right, I'll work on that. So then we'll keep the board meeting the same <coughs> on the 10th. On the so the other thing is we're going to send out another trifold flyer um, Josh has been our communications person has been putting infographics out on Facebook Julie and I have an interview with the Rutland Herald on Friday um, Secretary of Education Dan French is going to come down on Friday also and tour Castleton or not Castleton tour Orwell well and, and the, high the high school to look at the specific infrastructure needs there um, yeah, but that's not really true. Oh. Um, 
we you know it, these are some of the things we're working on i don't know if there's additional um meetings in in the town that folks can go to i know chris and josh are working on printing up more of the big poster boards to put around town um i know peter took some and put them at buxton's um the other day so we are working on putting those <coughs> together um I mean, do you, I know uh, we'll probably get questions at our town meeting. Do, should we have some of those things available sure. for our town yeah, meeting? Yeah, yeah. So if you want to bring, just reach out to Josh, send him an email, tell him what you want, and we'll get that printed up between Josh and Chelsea. Because okay. Chelsea will be back from vacation tomorrow. So we'll get that all. Yeah, yeah your town meetings, we should have posters of what it is and stuff. Yeah, and I can give you all of that. We can give you all of that stuff. Yep. Just let us know specifically what you want, and we'll make sure you have it. Yep. Yeah, Glenn. Um, I know that South Burlington had produced a pretty extensive uh, spreadsheet, both for what your taxes were going to be based upon yes. property value and income. Well, property value is easy. Cheryl and I spoke about that. It's that, easy, but you know, it's a huge estimate because you're going out 30 years and you're just yeah. basing <laughs> it on what you know today because, and next year it's going to change. That's just the multiplication that I told, showed you, and I can do that easy. So, so that table is fine. The other table that does it based on income, well, it's a combination of income and property. So that formula is very difficult. I'm not exactly sure how that how they did that I, I, I don't know so I that know it's exactly actually what it is accurate. I know what it looks like I, saw, I don't know how they did it the they hire a professional to do it <laughs> well, so I just saw you got that, me when I saw that, to, when I saw know, that spreadsheet I just that. said you know right. this might be something that would help I can do the property one easily. The other one is just, I I'm don't thinking know. They need to be careful that there's a lot of assumptions. Yeah. Yeah. That could backfire just as yeah, easily. Yeah, I just want to be, be you know, you have the legislature that's looking at the state funding formula. There's so many, like, you know, questions. I, you know, over years. that's why I give you it based on 100,000 <laughs> because then you're just doing the math but on I, that. I just, I just wonder how many people, you know, you take like Orwell where 75% of the people pay based upon income. How right. many people really realize that that many people aren't paying the full shot? Well, that's why we keep bringing that up. out there. And we're <laughs> going to do another trifold with the financial information. So we'll make sure those points get into that trifold. We were just waiting for the official, you know, warning and resolution to be approved to get that out there hire staff to do <laughs> yeah it's like triple stars these numbers are subject to change tomorrow yep you know so wow we're, we're happy you know if there's right. things that you can think of that would be beneficial i mean we're cert we're certainly happy to do it there's just only so much much time um yep bye any other if any other, you know his email broker email Josh. yeah email me call me yep stop by all right so we need an executive session for personnel please so moved. with just me. with Second. just brooke just brooke yep oh I need all in favor please say aye aye, aye. aye. opposed <laughs> go start with Contract and her, just do the contract do the first. Contract. All right, that's Second. fine. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? With with um, approving the board chair to sign it, so aye. you don't have to sign it. Make a motion. And then the evaluation. Approve the evaluation. Second. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Make Opposed? a motion. Leave. All right, adjourn. <coughs> motion to adjourn. Peter, Glenn, a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 aye.